Your Excellency, Mrs. Easton, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Manx Motorcycle Club, I welcome you all to the 1977 Junior 350cc Manx Grand Prix. For this event, the riders have covered 784 official practice laps, a mileage of 29,580. Now, please, could I have the attention of the competitors? The conditions around the course are excellent, and the forecast is moderate west wind and a slight possibility of an isolated shower. The control marshals will now line you up at the start line. Good luck to you all, and good racing. Across the course, Mr. Jackie Wood with his words to the competitors, and indeed we endorse an obligation. The two-minute board has just been shown before the start of this Junior Manx Grand Prix, and for spectators here at the grandstand, you mentioned earlier that I'd been talking to uh, Dave Williams just a few moments ago, and I'm sure you'd like to give him a nice warm welcome. He's sitting over there just by the start line. Dave Williams, the lap record holder from last year, a nice warm welcome for him because he's been a tremendous rider for the Manx Grand Prix. Nice to see you, Dave. All the very best. And uh, let's hope you enjoy the racing here this afternoon. A great sportsman, and nice to see him back on the island, and uh, I think he enjoys being back here with us. Well, the minute's ticking away almost into the last minute, and we'll have the start of this junior race in just a moment. And that's his fastest lap yet, beating his previous time by 3.7 seconds. Information like this will be coming your way throughout the Grand Prix, thanks to the Sperry Univac computer. Computers can help you in more ways than you realize. Yes, indeed, and uh, we've got one of those units here with us in our commentary point, and we hope to be bringing you those times very, very quickly indeed during this Junior Manx Grand Prix. Uh, the race will be started today by uh, His Worship, the Mayor of Douglas, Council Award, who is in the uh, Shell Rostrum there now with uh, Chief Timekeeper Bill Pycraft. Just uh, telling when to drop that Manx flag and the first two riders, Eddie Martin, number one from Huddersfield, uh, rode last year for the first time. He was a member of the winning club team, got a replica and finished 25th and did very well for his first performance. Alongside him is number two, Pete Fleming on an Air Mackey from Halewood. And after that, the field stretches way back, almost to that uh, pedestrian crossing in the centre of Glen Crutchery Road. The Manx flag and the Union Jack, each side of the starting grid. And then the final seconds now, the flag is raised and down and away they go, pushing number one and number two, Eddie Martin and Pete Fleming. And it's Eddie Martin that gets a good start there, 25th last year, and a member of the winning club team, uh, Pete Fleming, having a little bit of bother starting his machine. Number three, Russ Webb now from Sussex, and number four, Bob Tranter from Leicester. Number two, though, Pete Fleming is away okay. Number five, Dave Oliver from Saudi Arabia. That's a long way to come to race. And number five, uh, number six, Willie McKillop is not far behind him. Number seven now, Steve Bradley, 16th last year from Fort William, 36 year old, one replica to his credit. And number eight, Fred Broadbent, the man who is credited with that quick lap in practice at 102 miles an hour. Number nine, Trevor Parker, eight replicas he's got, Trevor. He's been riding here since 65. And he's away alongside the first of our local riders, number 10, Mike Neen from Uncan, and it's Mike leading the way. Now number 12, Keith Dungworth, made his debut last year in the Manx. He comes from Sheffield, riding one of the many, many Yamahas in this particular race. Number 14, John Knowles. Four replicas he has, comes from Penkridge, and he makes a very good start indeed. Keith Dunworth having a little bit of bother starting his machine. Number 15, newcomer John Robertson from Aberdeen. And number 16, Roger Oliver, who is the son of a famous father. His father is Eric Oliver, the former sidecar world champion, comes from Sunningdale. Number 18 is Andrew Gurley. Number 19, newcomer Bill Rice, nicknamed the Duke, on a Yamaha, comes from Dunmurray in Northern Ireland, 29 years of age. Number 21, Neil Edwards, on a Yamaha from Prescott. And number 22, Chris Burton, on a Yamaha from Manchester. They get their signals and away they go. Well, they're pushing. 22 is fired, that's uh, Burton. Edwards still having a push, as 20, and he's away all right, though, as 23, Phil Hotchkiss and 24, Kevin Kershaw, get their signal, 25 now, Tim O'Rigg from Staffordshire, 
And number 26, John Robinson from Staffordshire also, nicknamed Robbo. And Robbo's having a fair push before that machine fires. It does now, though. It doesn't, he paddles still. Number 27 now is uh, Robin Buxton from Warrington. He's away okay, Robbo there. Number 29 now is Neil Ravenscroft from Preston. And number 30, Roger Wilson from Utoxeter. Now, another local rider, newcomer 31, Jamie Garrett from Ramsey. He's 21 years of age. His machine has fired. He's away ahead of number 32, Graham Pierce from Manchester, but Pierce overtakes Jamie as they leave us. 33 now, newcomer Paul Thompson on a Yamaha from Dublin. And number 34, Jimmy Dunlop, so a brother of Joe Dunlop from County Antrim. They're both away. Now number 35, Jimmy Creer, a local rider from Douglas. Been riding in the Manx in 69 on a, on a, a Yamaha. And he's alongside number 36, who is Chris Griffiths. 37 now, Ron Meller, 15th last year from London. 39. 39 is Jim Binney. And number 40 is Dick Linton. And it's the four-stroke Air Mackey. Of Dick Linton that gets away first, he comes from Surrey. Number 41 now is Jeff Wood from Watford. Number 42, Mick Kappa from Stockport. Mick Kappa gets away, now Jeff Wood does also. 43 is Alan Lee on the Viz News Yamaha from Bishop Stortford. Three replicas he's collected so far. And number 44 is Graham Vickery from Birkenhead. Number 45 now, Norman Williamson from Liverpool. And number 46, Rolf Westrom from Birkenhead. They're away safely now. Number 47, John McKenty, and one of the favourites, number 48, Kevin Riley, third last year, and a member of the winning club team. And that's Riley away, but uh, number 47, McKenty, just passes them. Now another local, number 50, Ronnie Russell, alongside 49, Mick Jeffries. Having rather a long push, Ronnie, before that machine fires. It does now. He's safely away. Let's go over and join Eddie Fitch at Ballagrain. Yes, be silence here at the moment. Nobody around at the moment uh, just now, but they'll be speeding their way to us very soon. And it's very interesting to see how many, uh, how the family tradition is handed on with uh, Eric Oliver's son being in this race, Bob Jackson's boy in the last one. And here's the first arrival, and it is, of course, number one, Eddie Martin, also entered in the senior tomorrow, the motor engineer from Linthwaite. He's arrived here pretty punctually at just in just about uh, four and a half minutes. But he seems to have uh, left the rest of them behind somewhere or other. He must be feeling rather lonely, but I don't suppose it'll be for long because two or three boys are coming down to us now. They get right into the left-hand wall and tuck themselves behind that traffic signal as they come to us. There are three and four together. Russ Webb and Bob Tranter, Russ Webb from Crawley, and Bob Tranter entered by Tranter Plastering. Then come ten, six, five, and eight. Ten is Mike Mean, entered by William Collins. Six is William McKillop. Five, Dave Oliver, that's the Saudi Arabian uh, man entered by, uh, who, come, who works for BAC, a native of Kings Lynn, who has written here before and won himself a replica. And number eight, of course, is Fred Broadbent. And there goes number 14, John Knowles, on the Five Ways Motorcycles machine, with a six, seventh and tenth behind him in the last few years. Followed by numbers nine and two, Trevor Parker, who's been riding here ever since 1965. And then that, that lovely four-stroke noise of the Air Markey, uh, one of the Merseyside Supporters Club boys, 22-year-old motor engineer from Halewood, who rode here last year. And after that little flurry of excitement, it just falls quiet for a moment. John Knowles must have picked up uh, just a few seconds there, right in the seven and a half miles between the start and Bala Crane. He also had a win recently at Cadwall and certainly must be one of the most promising riders uh, just outside the practice leaderboard. And we're waiting, I think, probably to see whether this is young Roger Oliver, Eric's son. It is. There we go, 16. There's the son of the four times world champion, Eric Oliver, who won the TT here in 1954. And, in fact, the last British sidecar world champion until George Odell won it this year. Then come 21, 18, 22, 19. All in a nice little bunch, those two. Gourley, Bill Rice. Chris Burton and Phil Hodgkiss all together as 26 goes through. That's John Robinson of Little Halewood. 25 comes straight on here. Tim O'Rig entered by John Cope from Burton. Seems to be having some sort of machine trouble because he's just 
coasted into the uh, space in front of the Ballacrane Hotel. Number 30 takes the corner in fine style. Roger Wilson, entered by John Clucas. John Clucas, uh, a well-known Cumbrian motorcyclist who used to race in the Barman Hill Climb. Number 32, Graham Pierce from Manchester, who's ridden here since 1975. Followed by 34, Jimmy Dunlop. There's Joey Dunlop's brother, entered by Martin Ray. And number 12, Keith Dungworth, who's Barry Dungworth's nephew, also coast to a standstill in front of the Ballacrane Hotel, whilst he's had sort of machine trouble there. 31, Jamie Garrett goes through there on the ex Malcolm Moffat Yamaha, the Ramsey boy, one of the winners of many of the Andre awards of the Andreas Club. Jimmy Dunlop is Joe's brother, of course. He went through very, very well. He's uh, one of the Armoy Armada, celebrated at Northern Ireland. 42 and 37 go to Mick Kappa, entered by Jack Warburton, another name to conjure with in racing, both on the mainland and in the Isle of Man. And 37 was Ron Miller from Greenwich. 36 follows him through Chris Griffiths on the beer tail marquee. And then a gaggle of them, 41, 39, 33... Six of them all together as Kevin Riley amongst those lot. Big Kevin Riley, six foot two high, tucking himself down and left Ferris in Yamaha. Newcomers awarded his first appearance, a third in the junior. And they're rushing through here now. 44 Graham Vickery brought up in the rear of some around about a dozen of them that they stream through here. And Kevin Riley obviously making up a bit of play space because uh, he caught up with some of the slower men. Too early to put slots on them yet. There's Ronnie Russell, number 50, going through. Ronnie Russell entered by Wilson and Collins. Let's hope he has better luck than he had in, on previous occasions, although he did win the Newcomers' Award at his first appearance in the Manx. 49 and 45, Nick Jeffries and Norman Williamson. That's another one of the Merseyside Supporters Club boys. 51 go through. Chris Bond, a technician from Combran, who rides also in the production TT, collected a replica in that. 58 goes through, just going through now, and a quick check uh, from Pat O'Hanlon says that Kev Riley, number 48, is in fact leading. Nine seconds up on the joint second men, 42 Mick Kappa, and 10 Mike Neen on the first lap at Ballacray. So that's it, Peter, back to you at the grandstand. For new Suzuki machines and all Suzuki and CZ spares, call... And number one goes through, first on the road, Eddie Martin on his Yamaha, who was 25th last year. Way out on his own, Peter, and riding very, very fast in a neat style over here at Balaf. As I say, no sun out, but uh, the rider is just catching a slight piece, piece of light as they come through from Alpine Cottage section. But number one is clearly away on his own. He holds perhaps 15 seconds advantage. And it sounds like Ronnie Russell's bad start has put him down behind Kev Riley. But I'll do that private time check. And here now, three riders, the second group on the road. And it's number eight in the lead. Fred Broadbent, followed by 14, Sean Knowles, 7, Steve Bradley, and 3, Russ Webb, with number 6, Willie McKillop, on the Yamsell, not very far behind, and now number 4, Bob Tranter, and number 5, Dave Oliver, no sign of number 10, Mike Neen, Mike Neen of Onken, we're waiting for him, but he's certainly not through here so far, and uh, reported from Ballacrane to be in second position, or third position, but he hasn't arrived at the laugh on the first lap, can disappointment have struck Mike Neen from Onken, but he hasn't arrived here and he's, he's late. He must be late because number nine now is here, Trev Parker. He used to ride Air Mackies regularly, but now has gone over to Maxton Yamahas. Maxton being the special frames built to make the Yamahas handle just that little bit better, built by uh, Ron Williams. But no sign, whatever, of number 10, the local hope, Mike Neen, who's gone so consistently well in practicing, uh, riding for Wilson and Collins, making his debut on the TD course in the Manx Grand Prix. So misfortune has struck between Ballacrane and Balaf for Mike Neen. And looking further down the field now, uh, we've got to go further down for perhaps number... Uh, 27, but that's 26 and 21 going through. John Robinson, and uh, sponsored by Bill Ray, and number 21, Neil Edwards, and he's now number 27, Robin Buxton, who was ninth last year, so he's the sort of chap who might be up in third or fourth position at the end of this race. I repeat that number 10, Mike Neen, does not appear to have gone Balaf through Balaf so far. 22 now, Chris Burton. And now a gaggle, 24. 30 is the highest number, Roger Wilson, 24, Kevin Kershaw, number 2, 
and number 19, Peter Fleming, and Bill Rice, that's Bill Rice, uh, newcomer from, uh, I think, from Ireland, and uh, 18 and a half stone that Yamaha's got to haul, and he's Dunlop now, number 34, really moving. Not very good over Balaf, though, but he's followed by number 32, Graham Pearce from Manchester, and now four-stroke number 18, is it? Yes, number 18 indeed, Andrew Gurley. The white plate's far better than the coloured ones to pick out. And number 16, Roger Oliver. There's Eric Oliver's son, who pioneered the kneeling sidecar outfit, which are all the, the go today. Number 42 now is Mick Kappa from Stockport. He's well up as well. Moving down the list and looking for number 48, Kevin Riley, and going to time him the 10 seconds to Russell. This is not him yet. Number 31, and he nearly gets thrown over the handlebars, Jamie Garrett. I didn't catch the second number. He's Riley now. Slight hesitation off the bridge, but away he goes, and Russell's got 10 seconds to get here. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's not him, though. It's number 43, Alan Lee on the Viz News Yamaha. Still no sign of Russell. Six riders now. 47 is the first, then 36, 41, 15, and 39, Jim Finney. It's the back one of those. 15 was John Robertson, and there's no sign of Russell, and the time is half a minute. Russell is also struck. He's Russell now, the second of these two. Number 40 is the first. It's Dick Linton on the air back in. There's Russell. And he's 36 seconds behind uh, Kevin Riley with a 10 seconds time difference, so he's lost a whole 26 seconds in the 17 miles to Balaf on lap one. Number 35 is in trouble and is stopping at Balaf. Jimmy Creer, the local centre champion in the sidecar class, as passenger to Eric Bragazzi, has stopped at the laugh. I can't quite see why. Number 46, 58, 44, which is Graham Vickery from Birkenhead, and now number 53, quite fast, which is Jeff Johnson riding for Eddie Crooks of Barrow and Furness, who was fifth in the practices at 100.73 and was 11th last year. Number 51 now takes quite a good leap as well. That's Chris Bond, who was 21st last year, and he's followed by number 49 newcomer Mick Jeffries, which is not uh, related to Nick Jeffries this morning. It's a different spelling altogether. So Jimmy Creer in problems at the laugh here, and now number 33 is on the right-hand side of the bridge and pulls the clutch in, which is a very optimistic thing to do. It's the last thing you want to do when you're braking is pull the clutch in. Paul Thompson. 61 now, 54, 45, 64... Sorry, these don't mean anything to you if you don't have a programme. We realise that, but they're so quick we can't get them all through. But it was John Norris and number 23, Phil Hodgkiss. And we believe Jimmy Creer is changing of plugs on his Yamaha. Number 57 now. 57, Graham Heath, a newcomer on a Heath Yamaha. Jimmy Creer reported to be changing plugs, so it's a wise idea to carry them. And he's the familiar Welsh colours of number 63, newcomer Colin Bevan, and riding under the uh, green and red. I'm trying to get you a leaderboard out. It would appear that number 48 is leading the race. Kevin Riley leading from number 42, Mick Kappa. Number 58, Ron Jones, who has uh, consistently done well in practice and is, in fact, third in this section but leads the seniors. As number 52 goes through. Lawrence Paris, a newcomer on an Air Mackey. In fourth position is number 14, John Knowles. In fifth position is number 26, John Robinson in sixth position, number 27, Robin Buxton. So we make Riley leading, and the lead is 10 seconds. The second man is number 42, and that is Mick Kappa leading by two seconds from number 58, Ron Jones, who leads number 14, John Knowles, by six seconds. And in fifth position, number 26, John Robinson, 11 seconds behind the fourth man. And in sixth position, number 27, Ger Robin Buxton, one second behind the fifth man, as local man Jeff Kelly goes through, followed by number 69, Steve Mitchell. Now, it's Snuffy Davis. He must be well up as well. Number 83. Indeed, he is. The highest number through today. And 74 is behind him. Ray Evans on what's described as a Nasus Yamaha. And I think now it's almost time to go back to the grandstand. Just trying to see if Davies has managed to get into the first six. As number 79 goes through at a terrific rate. Ad Adrian Rowntree, in fact. Snuffy Davies has split the fourth and fifth men and is in fifth position in actual fact. Fifth position for number 83, Davies. And in fact, Jimmy Creer now has got machine back on compression, is attempting to restart. Number 35, let's hope it fires up for him. Haven't heard it as yet, it's trying. Number 93 now and number 90. But I think time getting short, we must now return him to the grandson. I think Jimmy Creer has got away. Be smart. 
protect your bike with Tektor tank and seat covers. They're waterproof, hard wearing. Barath uh, makes number 93, Jim Heath, up into second place on that unofficial leaderboard. Number 25, uh, Tim O'Rig, who uh, has retired at Ballacrane now with a seized engine. Uh, number 12, Keith Dungworth, was reported stopped at Ballacrane making adjustments. Eddie Fitch tells me he's just got away. That seems to be the news at the moment. The time of the clock is ticking away. Within a minute, I think the first riders on the road should be sweeping around the right-hander at the veranda and coming shortly into the sight of Tom Kind up there at the bunker. And thank you, Peter. Well, they're not in sight yet. The road is completely free and clear. Both Tim O'Hanlon and myself are keeping our eyes glued on that uh, right-hand sweep. Yes, uh, Tim's given me the signal. There is one man coming round it now. Uh, we'll wait and tell you who it is. But uh, it's interesting to note that the number... 14, uh, John Knowles was 8th on the road at Ballacrane. He was 3rd on the road at Bluff. We'll see just what, quite what happens when he reaches this spot up here, the highest commentary point, and I must stress that, the highest commentary point on the TT course. The highest point of the course is uh, about a third of a mile to our left at Brandywell. As the first man comes round, the other right-hand corner now is dipping, cranking over to the left, and in fact, it is number one. Number one, Eddie Martin on the 347 Yamaha. Oh, he's getting caught up, though. Here is number 14. There's number 14, John Knowles, right on his tail, and in fact, he has Eddie Martin in his sights now. Uh, I would say he's going to catch him just around Brandywell where they turn left at the top of the road here. But he certainly got him in his sights, and that's the order uh, as number eight goes through and number seven in close order. Number eight being Fred Broadbent and number seven being Steve Bradley from Fort William. Uh, official time for number 14, John Knowles on the first lap, 22 minutes, 28.8 seconds. 22 minutes, 28.8, an unofficial time for number 14, John Knowles. Number 12, Keith Dungworth, who got going from Ballacrane, in fact, has got as far as Glen Helen and has retired there. As number 6, Willie McKillop, with a helmet very like George Fogarty, goes past us. And news on number 10, Mike Neen, we've been waiting for number 10, Mike Neen, retired with a seized engine at the 11th milestone. Rider is perfectly okay. That's number 3 going through, Russ Webb. I'll just say again, number 10, Mike Neen, retired with a seized engine at the 11th milestone. The rider is perfectly okay and I can tell you that number 48 and number 42 indeed are at signpost corner as two more machine comes into view on Glen Crutchery Road sweeping down the right hand side another two in view that's 21 followed by 27 that's Neil Edwards and Robin Buxton number four goes straight through that's Bob Tranter but John Robinson or Robbo as he's known is into his pits Number five is through. Number five, Dave Oliver. Number nine, Trevor Parker. And we wait now for Kevin Riley, number 48. 48, Kevin Riley, the race leader on our unofficial times around the course. The second of these was him. That's number 30. Now there's Kevin Riley. Kevin Riley is through in what looks like a very, very quick lap indeed. We'll have some information on that shortly. But Kevin Riley, number 48, going very, very well indeed with, I reckon, a very quick lap also. Thank you very much. We'll have a, an unofficial time on that in just a moment. There's number 22. Number 22 is Chris Burton. And uh, number 50, Ronnie Russell, is also safely at signpost corner. And an unofficial time we make it there of 21 minutes, 46 seconds. As number 19 goes through, Bill Rice, known as the Duke. Number 48, Kevin Riley, an unofficial time of 21 minutes, 46 seconds. Just 21 seconds outside the lap record from a standing start. Kevin Riley, Kevin Riley, 22 seconds ahead of number 93 as Ronnie Russell goes through, and that was an unofficial time there from the bungalow. Number 32 is in for his pit stop. This is Graham Pierce. Local rider Jeff Kelly, number 66, has retired at Parliament Square. 
He lives in Jerby, so not far to go, but hard luck on Jeff Kelly there, the local boy retired out of Parliament Square. Another three in close company. 58 ahead of 53. That's Ron Jones ahead of Jeff Johnson. And some lap times coming in. Number 14, uh, John Knowles, the leader on the roads, lapped in 22 minutes, 28.8, 100.70. Uh, and uh, as we say, an unofficial time waiting for confirmation for number 48, Kevin Riley, in 21 minutes, 46 seconds, just some 20.2 seconds outside the record. News of another retirement, number 24, Kevin Kershaw, is out at the mountain box with a seized engine. The rider is perfectly okay. That's number 24, Kevin Kershaw, retired with a seized engine at the mountain box. Rider is perfectly okay, and still the field stream through. Number 16, newcomer Roger Oliver, and uh, number 40 going past also was Dick Linton, and uh, the highest number indicated on that uh, leaderboard as being through signpost corner at the moment is number 64, and as I talk, there he is, 64, Tony Jarvis from Sidcup, uh, riding the Altec Yamaha. And I think now the leaders will be well on the way. In fact, the first man on the road must be passed, but let's join Eddie Fitch at Balacrain. Yes, two, three, four of them have gone through there, headed by number 14, John Knowles, on the Five Ways Motorcycle Yamaha. He went through in fine style, heading uh, quite a little bunch of them. Number one, Eddie Martin, followed him, followed by numbers eight and seven, Fred Broadbent and Steve Bradley. But just before that, number 29, Neil Ravenscroft, had coasted into the square in front of the Ballacrain Hotel, obviously, to retire, with apparently some sort of mechanical trouble. Rider quite OK. That was Willie McKillop in the background, number six Willie McKillop on a Yamaha in a Sealy frame, one of our Irish friends, comes from the sound, same town as Joey Dunlop, but I don't think he's a member of the famous Armoy Armada. But the Irish boys are over here in, in good force, of course, as they always are for the Manx races, and the Manx men in uh, pay them return visits when the Irish races are on. Somebody's two people taking a slightly wide line, 21 and three, go two together, 21 being Neil Edwards, and three, Russ Webb. And uh, if things go according to plan, we should be having Kevin Riley along in not such uh, a very great distance of time. I can tell you his opening lap confirmed at 21 minutes, 46.2, 103.98 miles an hour, Eddie. Well, that's certainly putting the coals on with an absolute vengeance. And uh, certainly we're expecting Kevin, a big Kevin Riley. And in fact, there he goes now. There's Kevin. The 48, Kevin Riley. Tucking himself down into that Yamaha, followed by 42, 4 and 5. 42 being Mick Kappa. So Kevin, in front of him, there goes number 9, Trevor Parker. 4 and 5, Bob Tranter and Dave Oliver went through amongst that little gaggle. Then came number 34, Jimmy Dunlop. Now there is the, one of the Dunlop family, the Martin Ray Yamsel from County Antrim. And riding in true uh, Dunlop family style. So certainly Kevin Riley has piled on some coals, and um, as another rider takes the bend, that's number 26, John Robinson from Little Hayward, who got a ninth for the replica in the 250cc event last year. Number 22 is heeling over to the corner now, that's Chris Burton, the 30-year-old plumber from Manchester, who's been riding here on and off ever since 1970. And we're trying to work out some corrected times now based on Kevin Riley. Leads number 42, Mick Capo, by 33 seconds. 27, Robin Buxton is retired at the Crosby Hotel. Uh, Crosby, rider is perfectly okay. And number 29, Neil Ravenscroft, retired at Ballot Crane. An unofficial leaderboard we have that on the end of lap one, number 48, Kevin Riley has a 30-second advantage over number 93, Jim Heath. Heath, in turn, was just 0.4 of a second ahead of number 42, Mick Kappa. Kappa, in turn, was some nine seconds ahead of number 58, Ron Jones, who was three seconds ahead of number 14, John Knowles. And the fastest lap, 103.98 on the opening lap by Kevin Riley. Let's catch up with the news now at Balaf Bridge with Jeff Cannell. Three riders through on this lap, Peter. Number 14 leading on the roads now. Six last year, John Knowles, who was ninth in practice, is leading on the road from number one, the original starter in the field, 25th last year, Eddie Martin, and also through in neutral, Fred Broadbent, but uh, hanging on to it pretty well. 
Next one down now, Willie McKillop on the yam cell. I think he's going to have to make two fueling stops with this machine, though. Unless he's found a bigger tank in between, he was stuck with having to just have a few gallons aboard, which meant he'll have to stop at the end of the second and the fourth laps. Ex-printer Willie uh, going pretty well now from Ireland. And there's number 21, Neil Edwards. So the next fancied man through is going to be number 42, uh, which will be Mick Capper and hotly pursued. And no, he's Riley. He's Riley now, number 48. My word, he's really flying. Riley has overtaken number 42, Mick Capper from Stockport. And another rider very fast down the centre of the road it is, number 42. Capper and he's snaking under braking. He's braking very hard. He won't like Riley having passed him, but there's not a thing he can do about it. Number three, Russ Webb now from Crawley. Takes a rather wider line and seems to have more time to spare. He's uh, not got any ambitions perhaps for the first three, like the two who are immediately ahead of him on the road. Now the next one we'll be looking for will be 58. This is number 30, Roger Wilson, but we're looking out for number 58. Ron Jones, who perhaps best chances tomorrow in the senior, but in nevertheless was third in practice at 100.98 for this race. This is Dunlop first, followed by number 26, number 34 Dunlop, and then 26 John Robinson. Now number 9 Trevor Parker, and number 5 Dave Oliver. Oliver, who was 30th last year, and Riley is leading Kappa here by 41 seconds. Riley leading Kappa by 41 seconds. Number 4 now Bob Tranter, he lands on the front wheel, but not anything too outrageous. And looking for number 58, who was reported from the grandstand to be in fourth position. Ron Jones has not come through the laugh as yet. Two more machines streaking down from the Alpine Cottage section, one trying to pass the other. The first one is Russell, but he doesn't quite get past number 22, but he's trying everything he knows to do so. 47 nearly goes over the bars. My word, there's a few really right over. They've got their noses on the front tyre, it would seem. John McKenty, as they land, it throws them so far forward, only their fingernails must be on. And he's 58 now. Jones, there he goes. He's not so quick over here, though. And that was the first 11 as Tim O'Hanlon had them worked out here. But number 14, uh, John Knowles, has gone through. The roads are now completely and absolutely quiet. And I might say for the benefit of those people who I know are listening at the grandstand, number 106, George Patterson, went through here in fine style on his first lap as the second man on the road comes into view now. This, in fact, is number 8. Number 8 being Fred Broadbent from Wall's End. And... Uh, made his debut last year in the Max Grand Prix as number one now crosses the line that's Eddie Martin still going strong but uh, losing his position now somewhat on the road as number 48 there he is the man himself number 48 of course Kevin Riley going past in fine style uh, he in fact has Eddie Martin in his sights now he can see him on this stretch between here and Brandywell as the next man comes into view number six followed closely by number 42 now number 42 of course being Mick Kappa and number six being Willie McKillop anyway that's the sixth man on the road number 42 uh, and all going great guns down here one or two uh, are making uh, a slight sort of uh, uh, wide curve I suppose over to their right uh, now and again we get a puff of dust coming up from the stones or alongside the road but nothing very serious uh, nobody's uh, nobody's getting hurt uh, and everybody's getting round very well indeed as uh, as I speak of course the roads are quiet and I might tell you uh, just for the sake of alliteration that the sun is beginning to shine or trying to shine uh, we are seeing some blue skies as Tim O'Hanlon hands me a card to say that number 48 Kevin Riley leads number 42 by 48 seconds would you believe so that's a build-up. Uh, he's really piling it on as number 30 goes past us now. That's Roger Wilson from Utoxta. There's two riders in very, very close order now. One wearing a red-orange helmet, uh, just cranking over to the left now. That's number three, followed very closely by number 34. Number 34, yes, he's gone round him on the right-hand side and overtaking him. So number 34, that's uh, Jim Dunlop, in fact, the newcomer from County Anthem, doing very well indeed there. And, and showing number three the way, that's Russ Webb, in fact as two more riders, three more riders in very close order, number 58, 53, and 47 go across. Number 47 being John McKenty, uh, who I believe was 20th uh, in the senior and junior last year. Number 9, followed closely by number 43. Number 43, no, he tried, yes, he's, 
No, he's decided not to. Decided not to. And with that, Peter, back to you at the grandstand. And that's his fastest lap yet, beating his previous time by 3.7 seconds. Information like this will be coming your way throughout the Grand Prix, thanks to the Sperry Univac computer. Computers can help you in more ways than you realize. Well, the light is on for number 14, the leader on the road, John Knowles, and an unofficial leaderboard from Balaf on lap two, 48 Riley, 33 seconds ahead of number 93 Heath. Heath, in turn, eight seconds ahead of number 42 Kappa. Kappa, some five seconds ahead of number 58. Uh, Ron Jones. Ron Jones, 22 seconds ahead of number 14, John Knowles, and John Knowles, 10 seconds ahead of number 50, Ronnie Russell. That's the unofficial leaderboard, Balaf, lap two. He's the leader on the roads. John Knowles, number 14, gets his signal as he passes, and away he goes. And he's opened up quite a gap because not another light on as yet. And, uh, Number 48, Kevin Riley, what, third or fourth on the roads now, starting at number 48. The board just been confirmed now, the official lead is at the end of lap one, leading number 48, second 93, third 42, fourth 58, fifth 14, and sixth number 50, Ronnie Russell, the first five lapped it over the tongue and uh, Ronnie Russell not far away at 99.68 miles an hour. That's the official leaderboard at the end of lap one. The lights are on for numbers one and eight, Eddie Martin and Fred Broadbent for 42 and also for Kevin Riley, number 48. All through signpost corner and coming in now to complete two laps or third distance of the six lap junior Manx Grand Prix. We look up towards Clangtrutchery Road for the first glimpse of a machine as they come out of that dip and really tuck down behind the fairings and accelerate along here. And here's the next man on the road, second on the road. And it's a pit stop lap, I think, for number eight. It is indeed, number eight in his pits. And would you believe it, he's Riley. Number 48, Kevin Riley. And is he motoring third on the road at the end of lap two and started number 48. Kevin Riley, and he is really turning the pressure on now. Next machine is in view. On the right-hand side of the road, just easing it over. It's number 42, and he's going very well, but Riley is going even better. Just while we wait, yes, he's number one in for his pit stop. Number one being Eddie Martin. And machine starting to come through fairly rapidly now. This is uh, number six, Willie McKillop. And uh, number 78, Alan Cathcott, is reported to be off at Glen Helen. The rider is okay, but requests picking up, please. And an unofficial lap time here for Kevin Riley on lap two of 21 minutes 38.2. 21 minutes 38.2 seconds. It's an unofficial lap time for Kevin Riley at the end of lap two, just about eight seconds quicker than his opening circuit. Riley, 33 seconds ahead of Heath, unofficially at the bungalow. Exactly the same time difference as it was at Balaf. So just 33 seconds separating the first and second at the bungalow on that lap. Num number 30 goes through Ballacrane, followed by number 6. 30 being Roger Wilson, 6 William McKillop. Yeah. Number 30. And Ronnie Russell has just gone through here. We're working out some times for him. He was amongst two riders, a little gaggle of three riders who shot through here in a great hurry. The number 47 is going through now. That's John McKenzie on the Fowler's Yamaha. John McKenzie, who was seventh on the first lap leaderboard. Joiner from Birkenhead, already with one replica in the 250 event last year. And changing down in the background and healing over for the corner now, number 43, Adam Lee on the Biz News Racing Yamaha, comes from Bishop Stortford. Three replicas already to his credit, including two 11th places in the Manx races, and a very good rider at Snetterton, where he's had wins and second places already this year. Biz News Racing, Kenneth Clark, gives a lot of support to racing, both uh, on the mainland and in the Isle of Man. And we're just going to try and work out now some corrected times on those we've had through so far. This is uh, coming up to half distance because they're on their third lap and there'll be pit stops no doubt at the end of that which will be double the time for a little while. Yeah. 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 Trevor 
Parker, a very consistent performer here. Been racing here since 1965. His best time was best place was third in 1972, 3:37 and 53. Go through together, but number 53, Jeff Johnson, on the Eddie Crooks Yamaha coasts into the space in front of the Vela Crane Hotel, obviously to, to make some sort of mechanical adjustments. So Jeff Johnson, quite okay himself, fifth fastest in practice. But uh, so obviously some mechanical trouble. And Eddie, there's a correction to that first lap leaderboard. In actual fact, in sixth place is number 95, John Golding, who lapped at 100.30. So that puts number 95, uh, Golding, into sixth place with uh, Ronnie Russell in seventh place. So it spreads the leaderboard right the way down the field now, and we're certainly going to have that computer working over time to sort that lot out. 63 going through here now at Balacrane. That's Colin Bevend, who's riding for Gordon Pantle. And I think we remember Gordon Pantle not only for his brilliant rides in the island, but for the fact that he was the one man who did everything but win. He had, I think, three or four second places in Manx Grand Prix races and in the TT as well, um, but uh, is now sponsoring riders. Uh, over here both in the Manx Grand Prix and in the TT event, number what, 64, just going through in the background, is Tony Jarvis, followed by 4 and 36 and 41, and quite a gaggle of them going through, so I'll hand you back to the grandstand. For new Suzuki machines and all Suzuki and CZ spares, call at Grand Prix Motorcycles, Derby Road, Ramsey. Just turn left at Parliament Square on the TT course. For more details, see page 14 of your race program or phone Bernie Lunn on 814076. At the end of lap two, Kevin Riley's lead over Jim Heath is 38 seconds. In third place is number 42, but let's go over to Balaf. Well, news on uh, other riders, number 71, Cliffy Mulcreast has retired at Guthrie's with clutch trouble. The rider is perfectly okay. And number 84, local rider Peter Kermode has retired at Glen Helen. Again, the rider okay. And number 53, Jeff Johnson, retired at Ballacrane. That brings us up to date with the information we have. The leaderboard still, just to confirm once again, the leaders at the end of lap two, number 48, Kevin Riley, second, number 93, Jim Heath, Third, number 42, Mick Kappa. In fourth place, number 58, Ron Jones. Fifth, number 53, Jeff Johnson, who has since uh, retired. And in sixth place, number 50, Ronnie Russell. So with uh, Jim Heath losing ground and Jeff Johnson going out, Ronnie Russell could well have moved up into possibly fourth position uh, at the present moment. But now it's time to catch the news at the uh, bungalow. Let's join Tom Kind. Uh, thank you very much, Peter. Well, John Knowles has uh, gone past all on his own. He's got the road completely to himself as the second man now comes into our view around the left-hander. This, indeed, here he is, number 48, going past now. Kevin Riley uh, on his way. He hasn't, uh, he hasn't got John Knowles in his sights by any means, but uh, certainly he is building up this time now, and he's really putting his foot down. And what a shame that uh, maybe something happened uh, there to uh, Jim Heath uh, to lose him this place uh, so far. But who knows? As, we, as commentators have said before around the course, these pit stops, of course, can play uh, not havoc with the timings, but uh, they can upset things a little bit when you're trying to keep your eye on one particular person. And here comes number 42. Well, he's still going very well indeed. Uh, we're happy to see Mick Kappa going round. He's from Stockport. He got a replica last year, and uh, who knows what he's going to do this year. But uh, nevertheless, Tim, uh, Tim O'Hanlon is busily scribbling something away here. He'll hand it to me, and I'll pass it over to you as soon as I get it. And in fact, he says that uh, number 48 is leading number 42 by one minute and four seconds. So, Kevin Riley then leads number 42 by one minute and four seconds. And just as an aside, I might tell you that the sun was shining brilliantly here up until a couple of seconds ago. I was already to say how nice it was. In fact, it is still nice. The sun's still shining somewhat. We've just got a small cloud that's appeared over the sun at this present moment in time. But uh, on lap two, uh, again, we had uh, the first uh, five people, number 48, of course, Kevin Riley, number 93, Jim Heath, number 42, Mick Kappa, followed by number 58, Ron Jones, and in equal fifth place, we had uh, Ronnie Russell, John Knowles, and John 
scolding, but all that, of course, is now rapidly changing. The roads are completely quiet, uh, and as I say that, another rider sweeps around the right-hander here. He's just going to crank over now, around to the left, and crosses the tram tracks now. This is number 26, and number 26 is John Robinson. He is pit action now, number 48, Kev Riley, the race leader, is slowing it down a little bit wide, but everything under control, and indeed eventually stops right outside his pit. 48, Kevin Riley, the race leader, in his pits. Number 14, John Knowles, the leader on the road, is just pushing away now and gets away. That's the machine you can hear in the background. The scrutineers, as always, check the machines when they're in for these pit stops. And uh, Kevin Riley's machine is no exception. On the Beresford Yamaha, petrol being poured in carefully. Here's the next man on the road now, number 42. And an unofficial lap time for Kevin Riley on that lap, including the slowing down for the pit stop of 21 minutes, 33.6 seconds. 21 minutes, 33.6 seconds. An unofficial time there for Kevin Riley on lap three. Number 42 is also in his pits, just in ahead of Kevin Riley. That's the fuel, com the fuel stop complete for Kevin Riley. Machine back into gear, pushing now. Yes, the machine fires, and away he goes. Number 48, Kevin, and he's wasting no time. He's right down behind that fairing just as soon as the machine fires. Number 42, Mick Kappa, still in his pit just below us here. Uh, use of other riders now. Number 40, um, Dick goes through. That's uh, Fred Broadbent. Ronnie Russell and Ron Jones still below us here in the pits. Danny Sherman just having a word with Ronnie. The Wilson and Collins Yamaha there. Fuel still being poured in, both of these machines. And who's going to be away first? Being poured in very carefully. There's three laps to go, remember. And a note for Jimmy Dunlop there, number 34, to come in for his pit stop. Ronnie Russell is away, pushing his machine. So is Ron Jones, who's going to fire first. They both fire together, but I think it's Ron Jones just ahead as they leave us here. So that's the first uh, three of the leaderboard men, and four of them, been in for their pit stops and away now on lap four, completed half distance in this race. The seventh to twelfth positions at the end of lap two. In seventh place, we had number 95, John Golding. In eighth place, number 14, John Knowles. In ninth place, number 47, John McKenty. In 10th place, number 61, Jack Hyam. In 11th place, number 63, newcomer Colin Bevan. And in 12th place, number 90, Dave Goodfellow. That's the uh, order, 7 to 12th at the end of lap 2, 95, 14, 47, 61, 63, and 90. And right down to 11th place, they all had 100 mile an hour plus laps. And uh, our unofficial timings now at half distance is that uh, number 48, Kevin Riley, leads number 42, Kappa, by one minute and five seconds. One minute. Kevin Riley out in front and uh, confirmed that third lap at 21 minutes, 33.4 seconds. 21 minutes, 33.6 seconds, I should say. 21 minutes, 33.6 exactly 105 miles an hour and averaging for the three laps 104.53 miles an hour so way out in front is pit stop completed half distance and i think now checking the watches no more information here let's join jeff cannell at balaf well there's a machine coming down to here now peter i think it might be the leader on the road number 14 indeed it is number 14 john knowles leading on the road on lap four and away he goes 31-year-old John Knowles from Penkridge, where he's a fruiterer, and a good bit of success behind him, having finished in the Manx every year since 1971, with replicas in 73, 74, and 76, and he was sixth and seventh last year, so he's going pretty well, and a member of the Waterloo Club, which uh, promote races at the Aintree circuit, and uh, Aintree beginning to make a bit of a comeback for motorcycle racing, a good meeting held there uh, a few weeks ago after some uh, a period of laps uh, with, with no meetings held there at all. He's the second man now, and it's Riley. Here he is, number 48, very fast. 
slightly wider than he has been before, but away he goes, and we keep telling you that he's sponsored by the Beresford Hotel, which is on Douglas Promenade. They've really taken Riley under their wing the last couple of years, and they really go to town on it. They've got clothing printed with Beresford, and all the kids have stickers with Beresford all over them, and in fact, so concerned are the proprietors down there. I think they're the Thompsons who run the Beresford Hotel down there. They even sent Kevin Riley last year on a, a three-day holiday to France to one wine before the race. Unfortunately, it didn't work out then, but it looks as if it's going to today, and there's Kappa, but he's in trouble a little bit, Kappa, but he gets away with it. He was very, very fast indeed down to here. Number 42, Mick Kappa from Stockport. He left the braking just very slightly late and hit the bridge uh, a little bit faster than perhaps he might have chosen to, but he gets away with it quite all right. Uh, Mick Kappa, as I say, from Stockport, where he is a building contractor. In fact, he's from Chapel on the Frith, which I think is the ex-headquarters of the Ferodo concern. So, uh, in fact, it's funny we should be talking about leaving the braking late when he's from Chapel on the Frith, where they make the brake lining. So uh, he'll have to be popping around to his local factory and getting some new linings stuck on there. He rides for the Manchester 17 Club, and they're perhaps more famous for promoting trials than uh, road races. Uh, Dave Rowland, I think, is the competition secretary of those, the ex-works BSA trials rider, and... Uh, finished second in the Scottish six days on a bantam of all things if I recall uh, Jeff, one year. Just, uh, I've heard from Eddie that number 93 Jim Heath is up into second place just 30 seconds down on Kevin Riley Jim Heath of course went straight through at the end of this uh, third lap so it's worth looking there the difference Jim Heath number 93 up into second because he went straight through Jeff well, uh, the only thing I can't work out, Peter, I think we we confused this the last time because has number 93 in fact stopped for petrol because he's now on his fourth lap has he been in for fuel at all, Peter? To be perfectly honest, Jeff, I didn't spot if he had been or not. Well, if he hasn't, he's certainly going to run out of juice pretty fast from now on, because he'll never get four laps out of a Yamaha if he had a 10-gallon tank on it. But it's number eight, and he's running Russell the third of these. Eight, and run Jones, and Russell is right behind Jones, but of course... Um, Jones enjoys the starting interval, 4.40 it was, and Russell started at 4, so in fact Ron Jones enjoys about a 41 second lead on our local man, and leading the Isle of Man Centre Championship, Ronnie Russell, number 50. That I was can it. tell you, Jeff, he has been in, he was in the previous lap, uh, end of lap 2, and he refueled in 35 seconds, so he has taken fuel on. Well, I think that's what must have happened to him here the last lap, because in fact, when we were timing him, you may remember we were we thought he was late. In fact, we had him about a minute and a half down. That uh, was when we smelled the rat that he may have been stopped when I said he'd been up the slip road or into the pits, because uh, obviously that's what caused the delay. He'd certainly never attempt to get four laps out of a Yamaha. In fact, those that are doing three laps are here. Uh, it's not good for the nerves. It's down to a couple of points when they uh, get back to the end with three laps in. And uh, there's many a person pushed a Yamaha in, even trying to get three laps out of it, but uh, Heath now has got one fuel stop behind him, but of course if he stopped at the end of the second lap, it's a fair indication, in fact he'll also have to stop again, because uh, he won't be trying to do three laps, so if he stopped at the end of two, he must of necessity stop at the end of four, and he's done lap now, number 34, he actually is down behind the screen as he takes the lap bridge. He hardly sits up at all, number 34, maybe he's a little bit short in the leg, and he actually is sitting up, and we're not noticing. Newcomer, Jim Dunlop on the Yam cell, the, the cell part coming from a Sealy frame made by Colin Sealy, himself a former star sidecar driver, who uh, used to ride on the world championship scene, and indeed in the Isle of Man here, he makes special frames, and his, wor his uh, work is synonymous with good handling machines. So, uh, Russell has gone through right behind Jones, as I say, and uh, we're waiting now, I think, for the time between Russell and Heath, in fact, but uh, Heath now beginning to get the message after that pit stop, and I think Russell stealing a march on him because of that. Once, uh, once the fuel stops are all levelled out around the fourth lap, it'll be a different story. But as I say, it does look rather as if Heath has chosen to stop twice, whereas most of the rest of the hot runners are taking a chance and stopping just the once at the end of three laps. And we make the order 48 now, Riley leading from 42 Kappa by exactly one minute, with third Jones 12 seconds behind 42, then Russell, and he's, he's Heath now. There he goes. Heath slips the clutch to build the revs up, 
so he must be taking the bridge, I would think, in second gear and slipping the clutch away to build the revs up because nothing happens on these Yamahas at low revs. You know, you go along in your family car and if you've got a rev counter on it, you'll notice that it's doing something about three or 4,000 revs as number 63 Colin Bevan goes through. When you're driving your car, three or 4,000 revs is quite enough. That is absolutely nothing whatever on a racing Yamaha. Nothing at all begins to happen till about 8,000. Then you light the fuse and hang on by your fingertips. I had a go on one a few weeks ago. The 350 Yamaha of Malachy Craig of Jerby Builders, which is ridden regularly by Steve Moynihan. And uh, I only got into third gear, and that was plenty for me. And that was only on a, on a, a runway at Jerby Airport, let alone riding it around a narrow track like this. And in fact, we make now that 93, Jim Heath, who's just gone through, is in exactly equal second place, 32 seconds down on Riley. That must be equal with number 42, is it? On his own. Oh, no, he's on his own, we say. It's, it's just the equal sign. It doesn't actually mean equal with Capra. In fact, 93, not equal. He's alone in second place now, and he's 32 seconds down on Kevin Riley. Well, that's pretty sensational indeed as the pit stops level out. He's, uh, there's only 32 seconds in it now for first and second place. As number 41 goes through, Jeff Wood. And uh, another star performer here we made a note of was number 79, in fact, who's uh, down the field, Aid Aiden... Aiden, in fact it is, Roan Tree, uh, number 79, a newcomer on a Tony Fall Yamaha. He comes through here at a terrific rate. And I notice he's still wearing his newcomer's jacket. So uh, if that's what he does as a newcomer, I don't know what he's going to be like in a few years. He fair flies through here, and he's number 95 now, Golding. Another man who's well up, in fact, reported to be just, I think, off the leaderboard in seventh position, I think he was mentioned as being the last time. So now with 95 through, we can give you the first six. It's Riley, of course, from 93 Heath by 32 seconds. Third, Kappa, 28 seconds behind Heath. Fourth, number 58, Ron Jones, 12 seconds behind Kappa. Fifth, Ronnie Russell, 40 seconds behind uh, Ron Jones and sixth position number 14 the leader on the road John Knowles 18 seconds behind number 50 Ronnie Russell so we expect then that the next man presumably would be number 95 John Golding but that's the news from the lap on this the fourth lap as the riders begin to tire now in this junior Manx it's further than they ever ride the rest of the year round unless they ride in the on endurance race but they must be beginning to tire now and it's now the pressure must be applied when the concentration wanes you must keep it up if you're going to win you can't let up at all but uh, on the fourth lap now the leaders are already streaking up the mountain and in sight now probably of Tom Kine. So back to Peter Neal at the grandstand. Right is on for number 14. John Knowles indicating he's through signpost corner. Meantime I can tell you that number three Russ Webb has retired at Balagheri and requests picking up at the Union Mills pub. And that's a consolation I suppose to if you're going to break down to be near a, a pub. 48 Kevin Riley is also through signpost corner. Number 46 Rolf Westrom has retired at the pits. And number 110, who we described getting away, uh, Richard Cutts, uh, adjusted his chain and spent three minutes and 20 seconds in the pits. But now he's the leader on the road. The first machine is in view, and it's number 14, John Knowles, across the line now. And we wait now for the leader, Kevin Riley, number 48. A slower lap this time, obviously, because of his pit stop, but he's got a lap in at 21 minutes, 33.6, 105 miles an hour exactly, and that included slowing down. And here he is, the leader, number 48, Kevin Riley. Listen to him go through. And that machine sounds well, doesn't it? I can also tell you now that number 42, Mick Kappa, is through signpost corner. And just while we wait for him, the 7th to 12th positions at the end of the third lap. In 7th place were number 14, John Knowles. In 8th place was number 47, John McKenty. In 9th place was number 63, newcomer Colin Bevan. In 10th place was number 90, Dave Goodfellow. As there goes Kappa, number 42 going through. In 11th place was number 43, Alan Lee, and in 12th place was number 26, John Robinson. That was the 7th to 12th at the end of lap 3, 14, 47, 63, 90, 43, and 26.
48 leading 93 by 37 seconds at the bungalow an unofficial time gap there on this uh, lap um, number 48 Kevin Riley had a lap there on an unofficial timing of 23 minutes 2.8 seconds 23 minutes 2.8 seconds and that of course included his pit stop and he is now away on lap 5 number 33 Paul Thompson retired at Balaf Bridge rider is perfectly okay number 33 Paul Thompson number 50 Ronnie Russell is also through signpost corner and so is number 58 uh, Ron Jones from Liverpool on that Yamaha one replica to his credit so far and uh, with a bit of luck he's going to pick up another one in this Junior Manx Grand Prix the road absolutely quiet here at the moment so uh, great is the gap that these riders have opened up also on the way from signpost corner is number 26 John Robinson and number 8 Fred Broadbent from Walsend on that Yamaha the next machine is in view and it's Ronnie Russell number 50 gets his uh, signal telling him in he's in fifth place and there's number 58 Ron Jones uh, the man who is just ahead of Ronnie on corrected time but of course we'll watch out now for number 93 Jim Heath who uh, is safely through the bungalow because he of course now we assume will have his second pit stop and this could make the difference Kevin Riley and Mick Kappa by refueling at the end of lap three obviously taking just one pit stop and uh, it's coming up now just over three minutes since the leader on the road left there's Fred Broadbent and number 26 John Robinson number six Willie McKillop number 34 Jimmy Dunlop and number 47 John McKenty are all indicated as being through signpost corner as indeed is number 83 but number 83 is uh, a lap behind at the moment number 83 being Snuffy Davies who is well up in the earlier stages the next machine is in view coming now and this is number six yes number six in for a pit stop and that is Willie McKillop but it's now three and a half minutes coming up since the leaders went and we can give an unofficial leaderboard now we have um, number 48 leading in second place number 42 in third place number 58 and in fourth place number 50 that's our unofficial leaderboard at the end of lap four now over to Eddie at Ballacrain interesting to see the way Jones and Russell are keeping together as uh, Jeff said Jones has the time advantage and Russell is tucking it behind there goes number 14 Number 14 just going through here is Knowles, who was on the second leaderboard at the end of lap three. And there's Riley. 48 Riley going through now. Kevin Riley. We've just set the watch running on him. I don't know whether we shall have time to wait for the full 350 minutes starting interval, which uh, there occurred between Kevin Riley and number 93 Jim Heath. Uh, and a lot depends, of course, on uh, whether Heath makes that. Uh, problematical pit stop but Kevin Riley certainly going through in grand style took the corner absolutely beautifully completely a master of the circuit there's no doubt at all that he's got that uh, Max Grand Prix trophy well and truly fixed in his mind and what's number 93 the... Jim Heath has come in for a second pit stop and of course it will adjust our leaderboard that we gave you earlier but I can tell you Jim Heath number 93 is now in for his second pit stop thank you very much well that solves that one but number 42 went through in the background you heard there that was Mick Kappa the Jack Warburton rider of the TZ Yamaha from Stockport so the uh, times will need to be worked out again the computer will be doing over time to work this out against pit stops two pit stops are indeed unusual but uh, according to our unofficial timing here Pat O'Hanlon makes Kevin Riley leading Mick Kappa by one minute and four seconds and uh, those are just two of them who've gone through so at least we can make a check on those uh, do you say you've got uh, Heath in at the pits now yes he is indeed just below oh, us a long one a uh, reasonable one and in fact I'm getting a signal from from Danny and it looks as if it's chain trouble oh, thank you Danny I think the chain has been adjusted Danny Schumann doing a grand job down there for us that's the reason for this lengthy stop obviously chain trouble and adjustments are needed oh, well that obviously is going to put Heath a bit further back which is rather bad luck indeed 
because uh, Heath has written an extremely good race, and uh, I thought he was going to give us some problems coming right at the tag end of the whole entry list there. Seven minutes 40 after the leader left, the Ken K Kawasaki Yamaha obviously going great guns up till then. Uh, Jim Heath, I think, actually is an Ulsterman, although he's now a motorcycle dealer working at Redbourne in Hertfordshire, which is where Ken K has his headquarters. And uh, Jim Heath has been riding here since 1969 and put in the fastest lap in practice last year. There in the background is number 50, Ronnie Russell. There's number 50, Ronnie Russell. And there's number 58, Jones. So not so much between those two, except Russell has managed to get bigger, uh, back a little bit of that time advantage, which uh, Jones had on him, but not enough, I think, to make any material difference, because Ron Jones is still going to be slightly down on corrected time. Pat Anden's working it out now. But those two are obviously going to keep pretty close company for the rest of the race if they can, because they're more or less pacing each other, knowing that there is this small difference of 40 seconds between them in the starting time. Somebody else peeling off for the corner now. Carry him in the background is number 26, John Robinson. 31-year-old engineer from Little Hayward who won a replica in the lightweight race last year and we can give you unofficially the first four on the leaderboard now. Number 48, Kevin Riley leading. Number 42, Mick Kappa, one minute and four seconds behind Riley. Number 58, Ron Jones in third place, 25 seconds behind Kappa. And number 50, Ronnie Russell, in fourth place, 32 seconds behind Ron Jones. That's our unofficial leaderboard on the fifth lap. The machine fires, and he's away. Number 83, Snuffy Davies, has just pushed into his pit, and we made it at the end of the fourth lap. Riley was leading Heath by some 46 seconds. Kappa was nine seconds down on Heath. And then in fourth place was number 58, Jones, 27 seconds down on Kappa. And Ronnie Russell, number 50, was 34 seconds down on Jones. Number 95, um, John Golding, was in fifth place. And number 14, the leader on the road, John Knowles, was in sixth place. That was our order at the end of lap four. But Jim Heath obviously now lost a lot of time in the pits, and he's going to slip down that leaderboard. Uh, number 82, David Hunter's retired at the bottom of Bagaro. Rider OK. Number four, Bob Tranter retired at the pits. Number 22, Chris Burton stopped on the mountain mile and is reported as pushing towards the mountain box. And that's uphill on that mountain mile. Uh, quite a strong chap there attempting to do that. Well, let's go over now and join Jeff Cannell. He's Riley, right on Cupid, and he's past Knowles. He's leading on the road now. Knowles is right behind him, and he had an exhibition from Riley there. I don't quite know why Riley is piling it on so much, but uh, now he's got the lead on the road. I don't think there's anything else left to go for unless he's trying for the lap record. Well, I think that would be very, very foolish indeed because he's already got the race in the bag, and that's what it's about. Nobody cares too much for the lap record unless it comes incidentally in winning the race. But now he's passed. He caught us on the hop there. We were just consulting the uh, sheets here for the lap leaders, etc., and just happened to look up, and there was Riley flashing down, and Knowles was right behind him, and Knowles must be thinking, what have you got to do to beat this man? But uh, Knowles going pretty well himself, and according to the latest figures, I think, uh, let's see now, where was the, the latest charts? In fact, number 93, of course, has gone out there, so Knowles now will move into the first six, I think, because Kappa, Jones, Russell, Golding, that'll let Knowles into sixth position with any luck for him, John Knowles, who was sixth, in fact, last year. So uh, you've got to average over the ton to get in the first six in the Manx these days, which shows you the progress uh, of this race. The junior, usually the quickest, and uh, with the speeds lapping close to 105 for the fastest lap and uh, nudging at Dave Williams' record. It's been a pretty flyer this race so far. Our friend number 79 didn't disappoint us again when he came through this time. He was even wilder this time, Aiden, Aiden Roantree. In fact, it does tend you to say that he was frying through here because I think it's Roantree Fry, isn't it? The chocolate company and uh, on his fall Yamaha. And uh, if Tony Fall can say that the frame is standing the test it's getting here at Palaf, then it won't be any problem for handling on a short circuit because it lands with a tremendous bump here, but it never wavers, the front end never wobbles at all, and away he goes. And the lap leader, the race leader rather, Kevin Riley now holds an advantage on 42, Kappa by 1 minute and 20 seconds. 1 minute and 20 seconds. That is the gap through so far. 42 Kappa from Stockport gone through with one more full lap and the distance from Balaf to the grandstand remaining. 
And the next two riders, I think, coming down here, it sounds like a four-cylinder Yamaha, but in fact it's two twin cylinders, I think. Yes, it's Russell first now with Jones. He's beginning to leave Jones. There's Russell now, and he's Jones, but Jones is playing it pretty wily. He's, is he stopping? No, Jones is very slow through here. I thought he was going to stop, in fact, then. Fifth placed man last year, Ron Jones. In fact, he's very slow. He takes it on the right-hand side each time, and for all the world, you think he was pulling the clutch in and stopping just as if the motor had seized. But at least he does it consistently every time. But he was, in fact, even slower that time, and just for one tiny second, I thought he was going to pull in. Russell is leaving him, but he's got a lot of leaving to do because 40 seconds uh, takes a lot of leaving, and in fact, uh, every time Joe, every time Russell starts to get away, Jones must just squirt it and bring the Yamaha back and just say, well, I've got the old 40 seconds in the bag, and uh, there's no way you're going to get away from me. So uh, Jones playing it pretty cool there, and perhaps waiting for his chance tomorrow. Uh, he's leading the senior class with the fastest lap of the week. Jones from Liverpool, the bus inspector, and uh, it might be just the ticket for him tomorrow if he can bring off the senior, and it's looking fairly favourite for him for a good first three position today. So yes, I can tell you that Jim Heath uh, lost three minutes and 28 seconds in the pits, but is now safely through Ballacrane. Well, in fact, rather strange that he has chain trouble in, in the pits here. Uh, uh, in fact, the 350cc Yamahas don't stress the chain quite as much as the superbikes. The big 750s really see the chains off, as we've seen on the TD course. People like Mick Grant and that have stopped with chains. They're absolutely sagging on the ground after two or three laps, such as the power being churned onto them. And uh, in white-hot condition they are, they fair fly off. But on the 350s, in fact, I thought with the cantilever rear suspension, they'd tame chain trouble. So uh, perhaps the rear wheel or something had come loose on the uh, heat's machine and caused the chain to stretch. But uh, it's OK saying, oh, well, I can adjust my chain in a minute. It's when you're doing it under pressure in the pits, it's a different story. Number 47, John McKendy now and Joe Dunlop. Jim Dunlop would be more accurate. It's Jay, anyway. Uh, 34 is uh, still going on his yam cell and getting his first taste of the acquaintance with this course. Uh, on the yam cell, I think it's one of Mervyn Robinson's bikes, in actual fact, or an ex-Mervyn Robinson machine. And there's old Fred Broadbent there, tanking on, still going well. And in fact, I think it's fair to say that Fred's had plenty of stick this week with this 102 lap, but he's, he's lived up to it quite well. He's gone round at 97, 98, and uh, more than lived up to the promise. Perhaps not 102, perhaps there was just a little error made somewhere along the line there. But uh, even so, 97 miles an hour, 98 miles an hour in, in the Manx Grand Prix is not hanging around by anybody's standards. Now number 30, Roger Wilson. And number 6, Willie McKillop. He's faced with two pit stops, as I referred to earlier on. And 93, I wonder whether he took fuel on as well as predicted. I think he probably did stop for fuel. And, and when the scrutineers looked it over, they found that the chain was giving some problems. And the snag with running with a slack-back chain, of course, is that it can jump the sprockets, break the crankcases, and you're out. Apart from anything else, it hurtles through and can hit you on the legs and can be very, very painful indeed, notwithstanding that it can lock the motor up and throw you over the bars, which hurts even more, as number 63 comes through now uh, with the Welsh colours, the same BP leathers, uh, rather colourful, Colin Bevan from Wales, let's just check whereabouts in Wales, which means we go through the very excellent programme indeed prepared by the Manx Motorcycle Club, for which I'd like to congratulate them, without them we'd be lost this who's who, which they do annually each year, and which takes a very lot of putting together, and in fact from Merthyr Tidfil, Merthyr Tidrill it says actually in the programme, but Tidfil it no doubt is, down in South Wales, and sponsored by Gordon Pantle, who's ridden many fine races on this course, along with his fellow Welshman Dave Williams and Selwyn Griffiths. And there's number 23, 23 Phil Hodgkiss on his Air Mackey, and he changes up early, and he's showing all the signs of getting a little fatigue now, and uh, I think he's only going to get some five laps in when the winner gets flagged off. Uh, Phil Hodgkiss will say that five laps is quite plenty, thank you very much. So the lap leaders, the leaders now, I think, in fact, we're not going to get heat through. In fact, we've only really had about the first four or five through, but they'll be rapidly approaching the bungalow now, as number, he's number 95, Golding, now Golding, according to uh, Reckoning, must be up to fifth place with Heath's demise, Heath has reported through Ballacrane, but he hasn't reached here yet, we'll phone into the grandstand when Heath arrives here to make sure this chain's not going to cause him any lasting trouble. Well, the 
Light not on yet for the leader, number 48. In fact, the scoreboard indicates he's at, uh, not at the bungalow, but as we know, number 48, Kevin Riley, is through the bungalow safely and on his way down now to signpost to complete five laps of this six-lap junior race. Machine here is number 16, and number 16 is newcomer Roger Oliver. That's the son of Eric Oliver. He's just come into the pits now at uh, the end of his lap for some refueling, and the machine you heard going through was number 110, Richard Cutts from Essex on that 350 Yamaha, another newcomer to the race. Machine in view now, this should be number 85, it is indeed 85, in for a pit stop, that's Dave Whitaker, who first rode here in 1971, he comes from Surrey. Another machine in view, not the leaders as yet, we're waiting for those lights to flash on to tell us that the leaders on the road and the leaders of the race are through signpost corner. Number 68, Pete Lovett, is through, and Riley, number 48, the race leader, is at signpost corner to complete five laps, just one lap to go. 85 with the Stimson, Air Mackey is just getting away, that's uh, Dave Whitaker. Ended as a Harley Davidson, as a matter of fact, with Stimson, Air Mackey along the side of his ferry. But number 48, Kevin Riley, and number 14, John Knowles, are both indicated at signpost corner. Machine in view, it's white leathers, but it's not uh, Kevin Riley. It's a slower approach than the flying man from Runcorn. Number 102, it is indeed as Dave Nash on a Yamaha from Huddersfield. We're waiting now for Kev Riley from Runcorn on the Beresford Yamaha. And here he is. Here's the race leader, number 48. Just listen to him go through this time. And going very well with just 37 and three quarter miles to go to the welcome sight of that checkered flag. Kev Riley uh, from Runcorn, who lapped last year at 105.62, if my memory serves me rightly, just 0.01 of a mile slower than the record lap set up by uh, Dave Williams last year. And uh, he's, there's John Knowles, number 14. John Knowles, number 14, goes through safely, and I can tell you that uh, Kevin Riley's time for lap five, unofficially, we made 21 minutes and 39 seconds. 21 minutes, 39 seconds, just uh, a little slower than his fastest lap to date, which was 21.33.6. There's a four-stroke, which will uh, please Eddie Fitch. In fact, a double dose, two four-strokes going past in close company. Number 55, I'm told, has stopped at Balath. That's John Norris, just stopped, not reported as retired. It's Mick Kaffer, number 42, goes through. Uh, number 99, Bill Lawrence, has retired at Balacry. Uh, request picking up at the Balath pub. So a neighbor down there for Jeff. The rider perfectly okay, number 99, uh, Bill Lawrence. The 7th to 12th positions now at the end of lap 4. In 7th place was number 14. That's uh, John Knowles. In eighth place was number 47, John McKenty. In eighth place, number 63, Colin Bevan, a newcomer. In tenth place was number 104, Barry Needle. In eleventh place was number 26, John Robinson. And in twelfth place was number 43, Alan Lee from Bishop Stortford. And there was something like two minutes and 13 seconds covering the seventh to twelfth positions. And uh, we make a lead now if I can do some quick subtractions for number 48 Riley over Kappa at the end of the fifth lap, a lead of one minute and 17 seconds. One minute and 17 seconds lead on unofficial timing for Kevin Riley over the second place man number 42, Mick Kappa, at the end of lap five. The lights are on for numbers 50 and also for number 58. That's Jones and Russell, a machine in view. The first one is indeed Ronnie Russell, number 50. Gets the signal once again, which says Ronnie, four, telling him he's in fourth place. But he's his relentless pursuer, number 58, uh, Ron Jones, who gets a signal that he is in third place. And indeed, third and fourth place men there in close company. Number... 
55, I'm told, has stopped at Balaf and retired. That's John Norris. Number 40, Dick Linton, has retired at Craig Bar. Perfectly okay. Request picking up. And number 64, Tony Jarvis, retired at Balaf. Again, the rider is perfectly okay. Well, Kevin Riley, on this final lap, we want to follow his fortunes through. And uh, it's now some three minutes and ten seconds since he left here. And uh, I think it's time now to go over in plenty of time. Just before we do, though, number third number 58 uh, Ron Jones is now some 27 seconds down on Kappa and Jones in turn is some 33 seconds ahead of Ronnie Russell that's our unofficial positions lap five now for the final lap the final time for Kevin Riley over to Eddie Fitch all right well, we're at Palaf Bridge, of course, and we're waiting for the race leader and a bike coming down pretty fast now from the Alpine Cottage section and knowing Ronnie Corrin's times, it'll be perfect for Kevin Riley. Is this him? Sun now has gone against seeing... It's not. It's number 110. Number 110, which is Richard Cutts. Kevin Riley not sighted as yet. This is not him either, I don't think. The sun is against us now for identifying them, as I say. This is number 91, Julian Bishop, a newcomer. And Riley, has he struck some trouble? Did the misfire which Eddie Fitch detected at Ballacrane spell doom for the Beresford Yamaha? In fact, I believe that the machine is actually owned by the Beresford Hotel, and uh, certainly Riley is not with us at Balaf. Could this be a change of fortune? Could it be number 42, uh, Mick Kappa, who's going to win this race at the last gasp? Riley could hit some trouble. He's certainly not gone through Balaf as yet, and uh, I can only presume that... Is this him? Indeed it is. It is, he's Riley now, so he's still okay. He accelerates away, he goes over the bridge and leaves it perhaps 10 yards till he squirts the throttle on, and I think really what's happening is that he's just knocking it back and keeping the revs down to make sure that he doesn't blow it on the very last lap. But certainly firing cleanly away from here, it would be very difficult indeed to say that if he's dropped sufficient time, but he was holding a minute and 17 seconds, and that's a lot, so he can afford to knock the power off a good bit and play for safety for the grueling mountain climb on the very last lap, and he's Knowles now, John Knowles knocking on the door for a good sixth position, number 14, and there's 16, but I think he's a lap adrift, 68, 79, there's 79. I wish he wouldn't, but he still persists in doing it, which is to go over the, very near over the bars every lap, but, uh, he gets the front, the handlebars right against his chest. It's almost like Malcolm Rathmore going up a series of big steps in a trial. And he's Dave Whitaker now. The chap who's in my garage with uh, Roger Cox, his friend. They're both from southern England. Dave on his uh, Harley Davidson and sponsored by 20,000 chickens and 40 beef steers. I think that's the, the count, or 400 beef steers, something like that anyway. And uh, we've had some good laughs with them in the garage this week. They, we've given them plenty of stick. And they've given us plenty of stick over the Manx two-day trial. In fact, in my little lock-up garage last weekend, we had three trials bikes and two racing bikes. You can't... John Goodall still going? Unfortunately, he is therefore retired. And uh, number 105, Ron Layton, retired for first trouble. Number 55, John Norris, retired at Balaf Bridge, confirmed rider OK. Number 63, Colin Bevan, at the Black Hut. He's OK, as is number 22, Chris Burton, who's retired at the Mountain Box. And uh, number 39, Jim Binney, retired with a broken chain at the Bungalow. And uh, inform his pit, which I'm sure has been done. So quite a little bit of chain trouble there, surprisingly, today. Well, within a minute, the race leader should be at the Bungalow. Number 48, Kevin Riley. So let's join Tom Kind. And thank you very much, Peter. And the roads are quiet at the present moment. Of course, everybody now is straining their eyes down the road to uh, watch this race leader. And I'm sure that uh, he will be pretty happy to reach this point. He's got just this climb to Brandywell, then of course it's all the way downhill until he gets to Hillbury, then there's a rise there of course, then downhill again until the dip of Governor's Bridge and then the slight rise of Glen Crutchley, but I'm sure that uh, he will be very, very happy to see this point knowing that he's only got six and three quarter miles to go to the end of this uh, uh, very, very well run race, I think. But just a couple of words before he does appear it's nice to see number 54 that's John Chappell from Gwent, going strong. I noticed that he first rode here 
in 1960, uh, and then again last year. So John, it's nice to see him going well. Uh, Snuffy Davis is going number 83, going very, very well indeed through here. But I did notice that number 108, and that's Dave Parry, uh, was looking down to his, the left-hand side of his bike as he went through here. I don't know whether he's got uh, some problems, whether something is coming loose, but anyway, he's taken off up toward Brandywell and uh, was going fairly well. They say just looking down to the left-hand side of his machine. The roads are still very, very quiet here. The uh, sun is now beaming across that veranda bend so we can catch a glint when they come round. In fact, Tim O'Hanlon has just given me the signal, and here comes the man now. It's the white leathers, white sleeves anyway on his leathers, and he crosses the line now. There he goes. There's number 48, Kevin Riley. Now, oh, that's a tail ender. That's number 110 gone through there. That's Richard Cutts, the newcomer, just gone through. But Kevin Riley now on the uh, last bit of this course, the six and three quarter miles, to take the checkered flag there at the grandstand. Now, he's gone through, the roads are quiet, this is another, that's number 91, he's uh, a little bit adrift, that's another newcomer, that's Julian Bishop on the 347 Maxton Yamaha. I'll give you the uh, leaderboard at the end of lap five. Number 48 is ahead of number 58, one minute and 40 seconds. Number 48 uh, leading Ron Jones by one minute and 40 seconds on the sixth and final lap at the bungalow. Another machine, this is a four stroke once again. It's number 52. And number 52 is Lawrence Parents from West Dulwich, a newcomer on an Air Mackey. The leaderboard at the end of lap five then was number 48, uh, Kevin Riley, Second was number 42, McCapper, who has since come off, but is okay. In third place was number 58, Ron Jones. Fourth was number 50, Ronnie Russell. Fifth was number 95, John Golding, who has since retired. And in sixth place was number 14, who is John Knowles. So the light is now on for number 48. A scout there doing a grand job keeping me informed. Thumbs up for number 48, Kevin Riley, is at signpost corner. So... Just those last mile or so to go down to the left-hander at Bedstead, the short straight down, breaking, changing down for the tricky right-hander at the noop. Then just a couple of twists and down and right down through the box, down to the very slow Governor's Bridge, the right-hand hairpin into the dip with that adverse camber, which any dampness about can be very, very tricky indeed and then changing up through the box and indeed out of the dip, the right-hander just uh, scraping the curb as he comes out of that corner and into our view now, the winner, number 48, Kevin Riley, receives the checkered flag from Bill Boak, raises his left arm and a reception indeed for number 48, Kevin Riley, the winner of the Junior Manx Grand Prix of 1977. Number 47, a man who was just off the leaderboard and indeed would have come up onto the first six, has now retired at Balagheri. That's John McKenty, 47, retired. The rider is perfectly okay. Perfectly okay. So we wait now for numbers 50 and number 58 to finish in second and third place now and indeed number 14 John Knowles who led on the roads for so long presumably will come up into fourth place as a matter of interest that lap of Jim Heath number 93 that we timed when he pushed off after that long pit stop indeed he lapped in just over 100 miles an hour just over 100 miles an hour no lights on as yet but we'll have more action and more commentary in just a moment Number 34, Jim Dunlop, has retired at Schoolhouse Corner Ramsey with clutch trouble. That's Jim Dunlop out of the race. But the lights are on now for number 50 and indeed number 58. The two Ronnies, you could say. I've heard that somewhere before. Ronnie Russell and Ronnie Jones. And uh, our unofficial timing for Kevin Riley, 2 hours, 12 minutes, 20.4 seconds, 102.63 miles an hour which is a new race record average. That's 102.63 miles an hour. But now we look for the next of the riders, and here's uh, Ronnie Russell, I do believe, the first of these. Indeed is number 50, across the line now, and this looks like the relentless pursuer, Ron Jones, number 58, is it? 
It is indeed, and he finishes some seven and a half seconds behind uh, number 50, Ronnie Russell. The time difference at the start was uh, 30 seconds, so it looks like Ron Jones has indeed taken that second place, and Ronnie Russell has come in to finish in third spot. 40 seconds was the difference, and uh, he's won it fairly, com uh, got that second place fairly comfortably as number 85 circulates for his next lap, that being Dave Whitaker. And another machine going through is number 102, Dave Nash uh, from Huddersfield on a 347 Yamaha who first rode here last year. It's a fantastic family day here. Our good friend Ron Jones has finished second, and it looks very much as though. Other good friend Barry Needle is going to be in the first 12, optimistically the first 10. Just below us is Mechanic John Foster's worked very hard all week, and I'm sure both men will be delighted at this. Certainly we are. And here he is, Barry Needle. sensible way isn't it have a good swig of it well done Kevin Kev congratulations a member of the Cheshire Centre and uh, riding of course for the Beresford Hotel congratulations 75 and 76 third time lucky well done thanks very much a record race speed did you think you were going that quick well I, I just revved it to ten and a half thousand the first lap until I built up a lead and then I, I was only revving it to ten thousand apart from the last lap and I was just dropping the gears in about nine thousand your last lap was your slowest, your quickest was 105, did you think you were going that quick? Not really, I, I can go a lot quicker if I have to, but I just... I just saved the engine because, you know, one or two of the experts said it wouldn't last, but I've proved them wrong. You yeah, have indeed. How do you feel now about tomorrow? I'm very confident about tomorrow. Good, Kevin, congratulations. Let's have that fan club again. Kevin, many congratulations. If I can move on now to the second place man, Ron Jones, uh, from Liverpool. Four years experience in the Manx and finished fifth last year, but second this time. Ron, congratulations. Thanks very much, Peter. You were having a fair old dice with Ronnie Russell there, weren't you? As long as you kept him in sight, you were quite happy, were you? Yeah, really was, yeah. But uh, the main thing was the clutch was locking up solid. Couldn't get it to free, and it was getting in Ronnie's way, so I thought, well, the best thing to do is to sit behind him. Yeah. How did you find the conditions today? Very good. Yeah, no problems at all. And you've got one more race tomorrow, haven't you? That's right, yeah. I don't want to worry Kev, like, but uh, I was just running in the engine today, so, you know, we'll see him on Thursday. You're looking forward to tomorrow? Yeah, certainly am. Well done, Ron Jones, second, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and a particular pleasure for me to congratulate the third place man from the Isle of Man, Ronnie Russell. Well done, Ron. Thank you. Thank you. That was great, man. Congratulations. No, you are. Just, just the thing, the yellow thing. Oh, thank you. Any problems? <laughs> um, none really. Back markers didn't hold me up much. No? No. Um, from Windy Corner all the way home, it was on one cylinder. Was it? Stopped for there, and that was it. Was it? Yeah, but Ellis lucky to finish. Were you? Yeah, Windy Corner on, he went, and I thought, oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah. We had you in about first 10, 11, 12, maybe. Well, he got as low as eight one time, I heard. Yeah. Some yeah. and if went slow, you went We just did a chain on the second stop. Right? Did you? Kind of yeah, it was a bit wrong there, yeah. What did he finish? He didn't. He pushed it back. Oh. Right there. Did not. But you felt safe all the way around, right? Oh, I, you looked like. Okay. I didn't want to go past it. Oh, God. <laughs> Frighten them too much of a baby. <laughs> yeah, <that's> super, <laughs> yeah. What was the weather like? All right. 
on the one lap or the last two laps on the mountain mile and, and approaching brand new. Well, there was a cloud which made the view cast darkness on the circuit, on the road, you know, and just the sun was to, with that the sun was coming towards us. So. No missing problems, nothing. it? No. Few flies about. First lap, you started to miss up on the yeah, first lap. Did it? Yeah. Yeah. God, I didn't see you. I wonder if he was still in there. It worked out. I tried to pull my rip off, but apparently it, it went its own way somewhere. <laughs> Did it? Yeah. So they only put for six up there, eh? Yeah. Yeah. They got this computer, so they found other things to capture the results and come out quick. Right? Next year. Strathmore. I'll write that down now. And when I get home, if I can take the tape, when I see you in Bristol, yeah. early next week, Monday, Tuesday, if I can take the tape with me, record it at home with all oh, my welcome, leads yeah. and everything, and then I'll, I'll post it back to you. Yeah, sure. Okay. You think it'll settle down? Reg by registered then? post. So you'll be back on earth by then. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what, You're a little bit above the cloud, eh? Yeah, all oh, right. Do you not feel a little bit high at the moment? Hi. So you can't believe what you've done, or what? No, not really. No, I feel quite normal. Yeah. No, I don't feel, uh, well, all that. Uh, Does it make any difference going to Orton Park, like Kevin done well? Hmm? Does it make any difference going to Orton Park, Kevin done well here? Will you go with any optimism? No.